Hello, I'm James Hollis speaking for the Young Society of Washington. Um, you probably remember the folk maxims, uh, count 20 before you say something or perhaps write the letter and wait a few days before you mail it. And this is a recognition for generations before us that every once in a while we get into a certain mood state or a feeling state and in that we're agitated, excited, uh, not thinking clearly and uh, then, then that energy passes and when we allow some time for that to settle out, we look at things and we say, well, I'm not as angry as I was or that's not as upsetting as I, I thought it was. So what, what, what happens in those moments is, is we're gripped by a cluster of our own history what Jung called a complex. Now, Jung didn't invent the term complex, but he understood very early the power of these uh, psychic states that from time to time sort of possess ego consciousness and uh, give us a kind of program, a program generated in our history. We have complexes because we have a history. Um, our history gets charged in positive ways. If you hadn't had positive experiences of bonding, you wouldn't be able to form relationships. Um, if, if you uh, hadn't had certain sense of fair play in your life, you probably wouldn't have a concept of justice and so forth. So there are positive complexes that work in our lives, and there are some that interfere. Uh, early life experiences uh, where we're feeling overwhelmed or helpless or abandoned can get triggered at any moment, and they can come up and just sort of possess us for a certain length of time. And it's very hard to know about a, a being in a complex because it comes from the unconscious and there's not much we can say about the unconscious except that it seems to exist. And so a complex represents a, a momentary triggering of our psychological history. And if we're going to lead a thoughtful life, a life that's consistent with our values, we need to start mapping our complexes. We need to start reflecting on what are those triggers that activate our psychological history and perhaps impose patterns on our relationships or on the conduct of our life. And that those patterns are often not representing our best possibilities or our actual uh, professed values. And so underneath all of that, we need to realize there's a dialogue necessary with what we call the unconscious. And we can't talk to the unconscious directly, so when it interrupts our lives, we have to examine that and work backwards to try to see from whence that came. So the study of complexes is a profound introduction to personal psychology. What our obstacles are in life which keep turning up, because after all, we're the only one consistent in all the long-running drama that we call our life. In all of those scenes, we're the one making the choices on the daily basis. What creates those patterns, particularly the patterns that are destructive or counterproductive to uh, our own well-being or that of others? And, and when we get in to ask those questions, we, we begin to see, all right, there, there are uh, texts, if you will. Uh, Jung called complexes splinter personalities. And with them comes a splinter script. And when we serve that script as if we're an actor in a play, we become that person, follow that script, for that length of time. And during that time, we, we are in an altered state of being. So to become aware of the kinds of complexes that are activated in us is the first step towards consciousness. If you're interested in this subject, I, I would want to invite you to consider taking a course or attending a lecture sponsored by the Jung Society of Washington, where we discuss these and many other interesting topics. Thank you very much.